one thing I've come to unpleasantly realize about some of the education systems around the world is that they can diminish students' individuality, ranks, GPA, the competition between students. They squeeze the life out of us, bringing out our vitality, reducing our sleep schedules, just to bring out our maximum potential. But for what exactly? To get into universities with high name values. But I firmly believe there is more than that. Graduating from a top university can be seen as the ultimate marker of prestige. It can increase your social status, marriage prospects, and career pathway, etc. We have to ask, does such an education provide us with the necessary tools, critical thinking skills, and the knowledge to be able to walk the world with a self-found identity and ideology? Does school actually prepare us for the real world? Does our education system actually inculcate us the right mindset to prepare for the cutthroat competition in society? I'm a runaway from one of the hardest and most competitive education systems in the world. South Korea's education system is considered to be one of the most effective and efficient education systems around the world. Well, it has also constantly been ranked top three internationally, fostering students to be bright, hardworking, and creative graduates. However, it is also known to be one of the most pernicious systems in the world, with its potential of dehumanizing students, forcing all, forcing all students to, be, to have the mindset that your grades Mere numbers on a sheet of paper is above all else. If you agree with the latter statement, I guess you could say that I was one of the luckier students. I was able to escape South Korean education system to Hong Kong, implementing myself into a more autonomous education system. Should I have stayed in Korea, I might have been unable to further my own growth in a way that the diverse environment that South Island has. Embarrassingly, I had this narrow-sided view when I was just a primary school student studying in Korea. My only goal, even while I was in primary school, was to get into those, one of those prestigious universities. Whenever I, my grades were low, my parents would fear it. Because competition for those colleges is insanely competitive, and one really needs to stand out among other applicants. Well, in order to gain a decent chance in, to get into those prestigious universities, one really needs to maintain a good GPA and also attain a good score, near to perfect score, in KSAT. However, this is considered to be extremely hard. So let me give you a little sneak peek into my early life. I lived in the residential area that had the most number of tiger parents, competitive tiger parents. And the place can literally be described as a mecca of private education. It is due in part to the high concentration of tutor centers in the area, sending most students to Korea's top universities. While, of, while such control, despite being well attended, it can lead to anxiety among all students. When I was just a primary school in South Korea, studying back in South Korea, a school day would go like this. Wake up at seven, school from eight to three. And then after that, a typical day, a my typical day would differ from normal students. Hours and hours of tuition would just start. Math, science, debate, you name it, I had it, the classes for it. Well, I was just a primary school student and I was even considered to have a lot compared to others. And yet, this, just, this, this was just a normal life for me. It was an infinite time loop, full of monotony, of me doing the same thing, day in, day out. So the question is, was I surviving or was I living? Now, I don't think I need to give much explanation for IB and IGCC since you all probably have an experience of them. IB is diverse in terms of the choices of subject that you can choose and to, 
just that you want to study. And also it's shown that Ivy graduates are one of the most successful ones in colleges due to the complexity and the difficulty of the college preparatory curriculum. However, despite its benefits, IVDP still has the characteristics of a competition-based curriculum with its own great boundaries of relative evaluation. Even the so-called international diploma has exactly reached the level of true education. So let's go back to the part where I talk about my early life before South Island. Those years were repetitive and dehumanizing. I was treated more of a, my parents' product of my parents' expectations well, than someone unique, someone human. As time passed, I began to realize that this was, this attitude was a part of a bigger cultural norm. And I believe that this toxic and traditionalistic values could, should have been destroyed to preserve the true meaning of education. I realize that most parents may come across having their child as a robot, devoid of preferences and limitations, on which they can dictate their child's entire personal development. Parents would spend thousands and thousands of dollars to just give the slightest edge for their child. And this twisted but well-intentioned desire to create the best future for the child is in one way representative of today's competitive age. So the real question is, why do we compete to have the best future? It shouldn't be through the competition to get the best grades and the best future. It should be through our own pursuit of dream and happiness to gain and achieve our best future, our own version of the best future. Students should be diverse in their passions and that should reflect through their future. Forcing all students in such a strict regime, out by high quality in their results, shouldn't be the solution. If the purpose of learning is to score well on a test, that just means our education system is flawed or we students have lost the sight of the real reason behind learning. Our generation is the key to changing the education system with the power that we have within the society. We could offer the governments a thorough review of education systems in order to help them gain a holistic approach, a less test-driven approach for creating a new education system. Standardized tests are important, sure, but they shouldn't be regarded as a necessity or the only consideration. While it is also vital for society to remember the true purpose of education, the students themselves, and a proper plan for a new education system and the courage to achieve that dream is necessary to make the difference. We could propose a real life examples of Finland and Sweden as the most successful examples of a more holistic education system. Well, now's our time to make a difference by, step, by stepping back to have a bigger picture and it is also of utmost importance to remember that education should not be about survival of the